Welcome back to the Breaker Bros, and tonight we have Norman as our special guest, and we're going to be talking about some UC Bearcat football, and starting with Eric, he's going to go over the schedule. Yeah, so, I mean, thought we'd get a little bit more college football content, talk about it a little bit, bring in Norm, because he's a really fun guy to talk to when you want to talk about college football. Uh, for UC, this is probably, uh, and, and really no exaggeration, likely their their best football team ever, uh, especially going into the beginning of the season. I mean, you know, uh, football is highly dependent upon injuries, but assuming that everybody stays healthy, this is uh, definitely the best team that they've had in, in my memory. Um, and I think it could easily be their best roster from top to bottom ever. Uh, they On defense, they have two probable first-round picks. Um, their quarterback is a senior, likely also going to be a draft pick, and then they have a lot of other draftable players sprinkled throughout the roster. So, um, you know, let's go through the schedule and, and see, um, kind of go game by game. I'll lay out who, what I think is going to happen from a high level, and then we'll see what everybody else thinks. So. First game is uh, this weekend. Uh, to me, this is a cupcake game. Uh, I remember a time where you used to have to worry about Cincinnati losing to uh, Miami uh, of Ohio, uh, but that is no longer the case, and, and this should be no exception. I think the last I saw the spread was 24 points. Um, I don't know. It, it would be a disappointment, I think, for Bearcats fans if UC did not cover, but. Uh, you know, this may turn into such a laugher early on that Miami covers because UC may use this as a game to get underclassmen some playing time. Uh, in particular, I could see um, the backup quarterback potentially playing the entire second half. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I mean, Miami has fallen off the, the map in football. You know, back when Ben Roethlisberger was there, they were stout, and they are just absolutely terrible now. So. Uh, this is a good, good game to get the backup some experience and don't get your starting quarterback hurt. Yeah, I don't, right. I, I don't foresee any any issues with this one. So, yeah, and um, so nor I mean, the, the next, nor the next one. <laughs> yeah, the next one uh, probably even talk about less because um, you know at least Miami, a lot of uh, Miami grads live in Cincinnati, so it's of interest. But Murray State should be um, similar story. Uh, this is probably just a game to, you know, knock a little rust off. But, you know, really, so let, let's mark the first two games down as easy wins. Um, and really, the next two games, I think, are really uh, the key to the season. This could turn into a magical season where the Bearcats have, you know, national championship aspirations, certainly playoff aspirations if they are successful in these next two games. Um, personally, the Indiana game scares me quite a bit. Um, I mean, it's hard to say that playing Indiana away would be a, a trap game, but it has kind of that trap game feel to it because, you know, Indiana is basically a program that, in recent years has been on a parallel trajectory to Cincinnati. Last year, they had a very tr very good season, some injuries, uh, particular to, particularly to their quarterback, kind of derailed their momentum last year. But last I heard, uh, Penix is supposed to play in this game, uh, and you have Fry Fogel. So it should be a good matchup, but um, this isn't a game where UC is going to be, even though UC is ranked eighth, and Indiana will likely be in the top 25. Uh, I think the teams are, are a lot cl more closely matched than the rankings would indicate. And UC may be uh, one of the highest ranked teams that Indiana has, has a good chance of beating. So um, the Bearcats quickly go from being the, the hunter to being the hunted. And you have that Notre Dame game, which is, you know, um, a bigger deal for a UC fan. You know, I, I mean, it's a bigger deal to me to go to South Bend and play in that stadium than it is to go to Bloomington and play uh, at Indiana. But 
both games are equally important and the Indiana game scares me, but I still think uh Are you saying that because of the head coach? Uh where? Notre Dame or Indiana? Yeah, Notre, Notre Dame. Uh for well, the the head coach was the head coach at Cincinnati. Right. The defensive coordinator was the defensive coordinator at Cincinnati uh last year. And um Notre Dame was in the playoff last year and and just the history of, of the program. And there's a there's a very close tie between Cincinnati and Notre Dame because Cincinnati is a very Catholic city. A lot of the best football players, uh, with the exception of you, Josh, a lot of the best football players played at Catholic high schools. So there is a pipeline of Cincinnati football players going to Notre Dame. There are a lot of ties between the programs. Um, it, it's a big deal to to be able to play at Notre Dame. Um, I mean, Indiana would be in any other season. Indiana playing at Indiana may be like the biggest game on UC's schedule, but to have it right the game before. I mean, there's a bye between, but the game before makes me more fearful of the Indiana game. I just because I feel like Indiana is going to be ready for Cincinnati, and I think it's going to be a tight game. I mean, I think they'll both be tight, but. Notre Dame's considered the better team this year, at least based on the initial rankings. So, I like I, um, uh, I like I like the Bearcats in Bloomington uh, against the Hoosiers. Um, you know, I the, you mentioned this is the talent level of this Bearcat team, it's the best since 2009 when Brian Kelly was a coach, but the difference between that team and this team is that team had zero defense. This team is strong, especially the back seven. Um, it, this is a defense I can play with a Big Ten team, and I like them against Indiana. Uh, the Hoosiers rarely sell out that stadium there and i doubt if they will for that game um i I think uc is going to even be favored going into that game i like their defense uh they have indiana has a good quarterback but he gets hurt a lot and he coughs that ball up a lot and i think uh uh, the bearcats can capitalize on that um indiana indiana has made great strides in the last few years and i do like their coach but last year was kind of a weird year. Uh, they caught a couple teams uh, down, and they won a couple games that they shouldn't have. Uh, you know, even the replay says they shouldn't have against Penn State. So I like UC in this one. I think they start the season 3-0. and Okay. I- I'm going to go with you and say 3-0, and but um, the Indiana game scares me way more than, than the Notre Dame game. Hmm. That's interesting. I can see it more as like a litmus test. I mean, if they struggle and don't dominate like they should, then yeah, you know Notre Dame's going to be tough. But if they come out and look like what they should, then I feel like the Notre Dame game should be a pretty good game. So I, I feel like if they go into Indiana and do what they should do, it would give them confidence going into Notre Dame. But if they go into Indiana and have any type of problems, that could be an issue going forward. Here's here's what I like about UC's chances going into Notre Dame is there's a bye week between the two games mm-hmm. uh, that gives a, that gives the Bearcats a chance to kind of focus and get mentally prepared. I don't think they win this game at at, uh, at Notre Dame. I you know I would like to see them win it, but I just don't see them winning at Notre Dame. Um, has nothing to do with Brian Kelly. He's a heck of a coach, but he's been so far removed from this program. It's and his program and Luke Fickles are night and day different in how they do mm-hmm. things. But what I don't like about UC's chances is, you know, Marcus Freeman is now the defensive coordinator at Notre Dame, and he's a solid, you know, uh, coach. With he's going to be a head coach anywhere he wants soon, unless he waits for Brian Kelly to. Uh, step aside but I, you know Luke Fickle has shown a couple things in his tenure as a head coach over the years and one you know his wrestling background and his time at Ohio State and as a defensive lineman 
everything was slow and steady. You know, he was a program builder. He's step by step methodical on getting things better and better. One thing he has shown that, uh, at least, uh, and since he's been at Cincinnati, is you see teams rarely step up and win a game when they shouldn't. Uh, they don't seem to grasp that opportunity when it's given to them. You know, they're, they're good and they will build the program to beat you. But if they are not, uh, if they, I have yet to see them step up and, and beat somebody in a huge upset. You know, like that Georgia game in the Peach Bowl last year. They should have won that game. Mm-hmm. They they had that game. I mean, Georgia had some players out and this and that, but it, well, they, I mean, Cincinnati was, had some players out as well. UC but, was beating them up and down the field, but mm-hmm. they gave that game away at the end with just poor clock management and some really questionable decisions by the coaches. So anyway, I, th- I think it's asking a lot for them to go into Notre Dame and win that game. So I'm thinking uh, we're at three and one right now in the season in my eyes. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I think, uh, you know, if Cincinnati beats Indiana, um, I like their chances against Notre Dame. I mean, it, 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 to me, you know, one of the strengths Brian Kelly had at Cincinnati was it seemed like if a quarterback got hurt, the next man up did great. You know, they they were able to overcome a lot of injuries at that position. So, you know, they ran a much different offense, but his spread type offense was so quarterback friendly. Um, that he was able to quickly replace quarterbacks either in season or in between seasons. Um, that hasn't really translated quite as well to Notre Dame. Uh, obviously, they're going to have well pedigreed. Uh, I don't know if they're five star guys, but certainly five star, maybe or certainly four star, maybe five star type starting quarterbacks. But you never know until uh, they perform, and they'll have a new quarterback this year. So. You know, I, I think that the 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 offense defense matchup would be okay. Uh, to me, like the the defensive coordinator going, I'd be much more concerned if it was an offensive coordinator. Um, yeah, but the, the defense. defense oh, go ahead. The just the defense is the the players are still there. Um, they did lose um, both of their safeties. Uh, both were drafted. Um, the backup safeties have played quite a bit and have played well, but in terms of um, corners, their cornerbacks are, are exceptional. You know, they have Sauce Gardner, who's you know right now projected to be kind of a mid to late first round pick, but you know I, I could see him um, sneaking into maybe the top fifteen, maybe the top ten, uh, just because of the importance of that position. Um, they, their other corner, uh, Kobe Bryant, is probably going to get drafted as well um so and their defensive line is really stout the the defensive end um oh i don't have an issue with UC's defense yeah well that's i think trestle is a is a good coach Uh, Mm -hmm. but uh when it comes to notre dame's defense that's where my concern lies for uc yeah i mean how quickly can they fix their defense you know like i mean their defense how quickly can you fix a defense? I mean, can you, I mean, college, um, you know, player their defense, turnover. Their defense is pretty stout. I mean, Notre Dame has not been a pushover. They've been a pretty solid program since Kelly's been there. He's a great coach. What's, um, you see, UC's got questions on its offensive line. You know, they lost both tackles to the draft. In, in terms I, of, they are uh, untested. In terms yeah, they're of, untested, uh, but they're good. In, in terms of like the actual, uh, I guess ticket sales, like, do you foresee, like, UC actually having a pretty good presence? Like, or do you think yeah, it's going to be I, more? Yeah, I think so. They, I, I, know, I know that they've sold out their allotment of tickets from Notre Dame. And yeah, they, will, they will have a little corner. Yeah, just they'll like have a every road, Just like every yeah. road opponent at Notre Dame. So I it's really not going to make a difference to Notre Dame then? No. Okay, so that's business uh, as usual. Significant. I, I think there's going to be a lot of, I mean, obviously we'll have our little pie wedge in the corner of red and black. And then I think you'll see some UC fans sprinkled throughout just because of the uh, physical proximity of, of the two places and, and you know, 
um, the significance of Cincinnati playing at Notre Dame. I, I think, you know, there, there are, I know a number of uh, people um, that live in Cincinnati have season tickets to Notre Dame. So I could see a lot of those tickets ending up in Cincinnati fans' hands. But yeah, I, I agree with Norm. I don't think it's going to change the crowd noise mm. so much. Um, so, it, you know, I, you got me, them 4-0 going into Temple, <laughs> the Bearcats. Uh, I mean, th- this is more hopeful. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that they're going to lose one of the two games between Indiana and Notre Dame. Well, you said so they're going to beat Indiana, with... so which one are they going to lose? Uh, well, okay, I have them 4-0. Four, four I'm going okay. to go with my – I'm going to go with uh, best-case scenario. So, okay. So, you know. And then Temple uh, – Temple's not good, so that's an easy is, win. Is that a home game? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. it is. Yeah. So that yeah, I don't see a problem. Why is that, that one on ESPN? You see, I mean, looking at their schedule, you see as the potential of being. Maybe they're doing us a favor. They want us to look good on national five team TV by then. You, you know, know uh, Temple is thirteen seven and one against UC. So Temple has been tough against UC over the years, <laughs> but I think this year they're going to win. That's well, not not last year, and and not this year either. <laughs> I just didn't realize Temple had such a pool to. Uh... Their 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 programs kind of fallen apart over the past year or two. Yes. I know they had a lot of problems last year, uh, with like just COVID protocol and just. Oh, Josh, management. it's it's ESPN because it's a Friday night game. Uh, oh, there you go. Okay, they so had to fill a slot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's smart on UC's part. <laughs> Friday night lights, baby. <laughs> there you well, go. But yeah, they should look good with uh, Temple, so that'd be nice. Okay, your boy is the new coach at UCF, Eric. How do you see that game? Uh, that, this game kind of scares me a little bit too. I mean, the, the upside of it is that it's at home and in this game, um, the crowd is going to be pretty, well, the crowd's going to be wild for the temple game. Cause it's a Friday night game, but also any game against UCF, th- this has turned into, um, a rivalry for sure between Cincinnati and UCF over the past few years. Um, they've basically taken turns. Uh, representing the conference in bowl games, uh, aside from Memphis. Um, but the, those three have been uh, kind of the powerhouses of the pro, or of the conference. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I am a huge fan of, uh, of UCF's coach. I, I think that somehow they, they upgraded uh, by f- having Hypo leave and then um, – of course, I'm saying a fan of the guy. I can't think of his name. Do you remember Gus his name? Gus Malzahn. Gus Malzahn, yeah. The so Tommy Tuberville of Central Florida. <laughs> we could only hope, but <laughs> I, I don't think it's I don't think it's going to be that bad. I mean, he's I know he's brought a few um, players with him from uh, Auburn, and which was terrible last year in the SEC. Um, but the the thing that the thing that so yeah Malzahn the way he ran Auburn right they 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 call it like a roller coaster where it's just chaotic up and down they never know if they're good or bad uh, but his record against Alabama has always been uh, I mean he's I think he has one of the best records against Alabama head to head you know of any team in the country uh, you know obviously it's a rivalry so you get a little bit closer game with the big rivalry but i think it's because he's so unconventional and because they just do weird stuff you know like they're auburn with malzahn were the kings of just weird plays weird formations you know amazing uh plays happening just you know i I don't know if it's luck or I, i think he's just kind of um you know, like a Mad Hatter of sorts. So, um, I think I think because of that, it's going to be a weird game. But I, I think that UC handles it easily because I, I just I don't know that his style of offense really matches with. Uh, well, I don't think what, he has the players quite yet to match with UC. I think there's a talent gap between Cincinnati and and Central Florida right now. 
maybe in a couple of years it won't be, but now definitely a talent gap plus the games in Cincinnati. So yeah, I like the Bearcats here as well. All right. So then the next game uh, at at Navy. Um, triple there was option. a time. What's that? The old triple option. Well, there was a time where. Uh, well, I, I remember during the first few seasons of of um, the current regime, some ridiculous stats against Navy. It seemed like. Uh, the first game they played against the triple option, uh, they never tackled anybody from Navy. It, it was yeah. like they were averaging like 15 yards a carry, and the only stops were like on plays that they ran to the outside and just ran out of bounds. Um, but th- that's no more. They've they they've taken that personally, and they've defended the triple option really well the past few years. Uh, so I, I I think that this is an easy win as well. I just can't believe that's still a thing, the triple option. Well, it is with the service. It is with the service academies because they don't have the athletes that the other schools yeah. do. Actually, it kind of makes sense for Navy, but um, yeah, it, it, kind of off topic. I just saw a post on because uh, the uh, Cardinals, they I guess they got, they got blown out, and uh, they were just talking about they need to stop running the triple option. But, but yeah, I, I just can't believe that's still a thing because like oh, Cole Rain, you mean? Yeah, yeah, Cole yeah. Cardinals. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, like, yeah, it, it's 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 just one of those things where being you know if if everybody's doing it one way and you have a huge talent gap, you got to do something different, right? Yeah, yeah. You can't be the the you know you, you can't try to replicate Alabama with service academy players. You got to do something that teams aren't prepared for. No, right. I think I actually Maybe. think more teams should run the triple option in college, especially uh, say Kansas or uh, you know a, a schools that are not quite up to the level of everybody else in the league. Why not? Why not go for it? I mean, you get your quarterback yeah, you I, run I, and some running backs and just go for it. I agree. I mean, I I think that if you're if you're a bad team. And you've been bad for a long time. You should try something weird, right? I agree. A option, or it's not even necessarily weird. I mean, it's just different, and different is difficult until somebody catches up to it. You know. Yeah, and that that's kind of what's happened to Navy by joining a conference is, is that people have kind of uh, it's not as novel, right? Because the coaches have played against it a few years. They have tape. Um, they know how to prepare for it. Um, yeah. and not to say that it's a bad idea to do, but I, I mean, you, you saw that when Paul Johnson went to Georgia Tech, how, you know, it, it worked, but it wasn't quite as effective when he was at Navy, when they're an independent, they play against these bigger teams, you know, every once in a while, and it'd be the oddball thing. Um, or, or if like a new coach. Like you know, Army, that's, a- that's why Army has been so good lately is because they're not in a conference and they pick and choose who they yeah. play. And if they play, let's say Michigan or something, Michigan does not prepare for that team every year, like Cincinnati will against Navy. So yeah, you're right. Yeah. I think that uh, I never like to play Navy ever, but uh, yeah, I think UC will handle them. No problem. They seem to have really broke that code on that, that triple option the last couple of years. Yeah. So yeah. I have them at one, two, uh, six and one. I think I have them. You have them at seven and zero. Oh? Yeah, <laughs> seven and zero, oh, baby. All right, Josh. What do you think? Just drive on. Yeah. yeah no. No. <laughs> I'm going to give you my final prediction at the end. Okay. Oh, okay. You, you, you I, 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 I got to hear yeah. the experts first. I can't just give you my opinion <laughs> right away. Yeah. Uh. So Tulane's supposed to be a much better team this year. Um. I don't know much about Tulane, so I'm just going to chalk this up as a win. I'm not worried about Tulane. Oh, they got a nice football facility now. It's a small mm-hmm. stadium, brand new. They don't play yeah. in the, uh, oh, what was that place called? Yeah, I forgot now. The, the Rice the... Bowl or something like that. Oh. <laughs> for thousand, for 100 years. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I don't, they are supposed to be improved, but I think UC's talent 
will prevail. And even if they do something strange, like want to just, you know, throw the ball all the time to Lane, I'm speaking, I think UC has that, like I said, that back seven, the cornerbacks you talked about. Mm-hmm. I don't see that as being a problem. Another yeah. win. Boom. All right, Tulsa. Um... I don't like Tulsa, <laughs> so it's going to be a win. Uh, that's not much analysis. I, Tulsa's been tough for the past few years. Um, they've had a good defense. I, I know they had their their linebacker drafted in, I um, can't remember if it was at the end of the first round or in the second round in this year's draft. Um, I can't remember his name. But he was a good coverage linebacker and, and seemed to give the tight ends from UC uh, some issues. Um, where although he didn't have many tackles, it seemed like the the tight end, you know, Josh Wiley, didn't really have much of a game. So he's gone, and, you know, Tulsa was otherwise very unimpressive. They kept it close because of their defense, but uh, I think I think this I is going to be an easy win for the Bearcats. Didn't you see just barely beat them by three points last year in the championship game? At UC, was that at UC? I guess it was. That was at yeah. UC, but that I mean, with in front of like three thousand people. Um, well, I think everybody had to play with that, except for the SEC last year. Yeah, but this year they get them at home they get with a crowd, thirty thousand. <laughs> it's a little bit louder with thirty thousand at Nippert than it is with four or five thousand for sure. I um, think that I think they be. Tulsa as well. The UC schedule sets up so perfectly this year for them. Uh, next year is going to be tough, but this year their most difficult conference or uh, conference games are at home. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, USF. Uh, they, they haven't been good in a very long time. That that um, that that program has really fallen off a cliff. Yeah. SMU, I, there's some chatter that SMU is going to be really good, but um, you know I'm not worried about their offense. They they shut them down at SMU last year. This game's at home this year, so I I think this is an easy win. And then, you know, if UC was playing East Carolina in basketball, I'd be worried about that game, but um, I'm not. I, I I mean the way I see it is UC is going to easily win their conference. Um, they'll host the conference championship game. So I would chalk those all down as wins. Really, the season is going to be go from being um, like all world season. If they win out, then they'll have a very strong argument to make the playoff. Um, I think that they likely will make the playoff. Um, well, it's hard to say because I mean they don't really control who wins and, and loses in the other leagues, but. Um, Having that game against Indiana helps because they'll have some uh, argument um, to be included. Say if there's like a one-loss Big Ten championship or champion, they they would have at least an argument that they should be picked ahead of them. Um, Wait, what? Did you just say, what did you say? I said Um, if the Big Ten has a a one-loss champion... Yeah. Then you see at least have an argument that they should be picked ahead of them. If they're undefeated. If they're undefeated, yes. Okay. Yeah. They'll have an argument they still won't get in, but Oh no, of course argument. not. Of course not. There's no way that a big there's no way that the Big Ten champion is going to be left out of the playoff. I'm gonna finish the schedule real quick. Okay. Um SMU, I think that has that'll probably be the most entertaining game, I think. So that will be a pretty good – I think that will be a high-scoring game. Uh, I, I like SMU. Uh, they absolutely fell apart last year at home against the Bearcats, so, and I think the defense was the reason for that. So I, the, I, th- I like UC at home against SMU because of the Bearcats' defense. Um, East Carolina, man, you talk about a classic trap game. <laughs> it's difficult. It's difficult to travel into East Carolina. You see, never plays great there. For sure, and in basketball. Is, for sure, and they this do is, terribly there. And this is a game that uh, 
you know, the college football playoff committee will be yippity yapping and that everybody's going to be talking about who should be in the playoffs and who shouldn't. You see had better focus on that last road game. That's all I can say. Uh, because that that game, they should win it. They should easily win it. But, man, that that has the the making of a, a trap game there. Yeah. So I agree. Uh, I think you see uh, – will be in the conference championship game. And really uh, the only other team in the conference, the AC that's getting any chatter right now, um, UCF is, and I think that's mainly because of the coaching change, but uh, I guess Houston's the only other one and they're not on the schedule this year. So maybe Houston comes out of the, they don't have divisions anymore in the AC, do they? It's just uh, the top two teams play. Is that a, I don't know anybody, for sure. <laughs> can anybody verify that? I think I think they got rid of divisions to it. Uh, in the ASD, so it's just the top two teams. I don't know. But, uh, also, Houston. Memphis is not on the schedule, but um, right. I don't know that Memphis is going to be very good this year. I think they've taken a step back, but uh, I I am not a fan of Houston's coach. What is that, Dana Holgerson? Holgerson. Um, so I like. I mean, UC should win the AAC this year. And then I have them at one loss. You have them at none. Uh, either way, they should be in the conversation at the end of the year. But, you know, I think if, if they're undefeated, I think they go to the college football playoffs. I think because of uh, the last few years and the talk of the need to expand the uh, college playoffs. I think if they're undefeated, they're in. Their schedule is as good as anybody's. Um, that'll have that same argument. You know, if they beat Indiana and they beat Notre Dame, and yeah. Indiana and Notre Dame live up to their billing. Now, if they have bad seasons this year, that does not help the cause. No, but, certainly not. You you need Indiana and yeah. Notre Dame to win a lot of games. And then you yeah. need UC to go in there and win both. Right, exactly. I I, I really see uh, UC as just it's another solid year, a conference or a conference championship, and probably a New Year's Six Bowl. You know, and that's that is nothing wrong with that. No, it's a it's a great season, and you know, I think the the East Carolina game would worry me if there weren't so many seniors on this team. Uh, the Bearcats had a lot of uh, seniors come back to play that would have been drafted had they come out last year. And I, I, I think that that leadership from Desmond Ritter, the quarterback, uh, I mean, he's an excellent college football player. And, and I, I see him as, um, you know, probably third, fourth round type quarterback prospect in the NFL. Um, so I, I think you have that leadership on the offensive side of the ball. And then you have Kobe Bryant who came back. Um, he's going to be kind of a mid-round draft pick in the NFL. And then Sauce Gardner, you know, he's he's going to be um, a first-round draft pick. So so all these guys, you know, they they came back um, for a reason. And, and I think the focus is going to be there. Um, and the the just the talent difference gives them a greater margin uh, for error at East Carolina where that game doesn't worry me, but see, I, I see the trap potential at Indiana because um, they don't have mu as much margin for error. Like I, I think to win against Indiana and Notre Dame, they're going to need close to their a game um, to win both of those games. If they show up um, yeah. and Indiana I mean, put out a C game, I, I don't think that they can win. I don't but, think, uh, I don't think it'll be a trap game. I think UC will, will be prepared for it. I mean, you, mm -hmm. how can you be a trap game against a, uh, you know, a ranked opponent anyway, in a, in a big 10 opponent. You've been talking, uh, underappreciated by the college football world all this time. So I think they will be ready. Yeah. And, and I think they'll, I think they're just a better team than Indiana this year. Number one, I think they mm -hmm. have better players. The defense I think is, will, uh, certainly do them well against Indiana. 
again, I think the only one I, I mean, I, I would like to see him beat Notre Dame, but I just, I just can't see him uh, winning both of those games. Like you had mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, either way it shapes up to be a good season. So I guess, I I guess I'm going to go ahead and and say that they're going to go undefeated uh, with, I think the closest scare being in Indiana. I think that Notre Dame is going to be a close game, but I, I think that they'll pull that one off. I'm more confident that they'll beat Notre Dame than uh, Indiana, only because of my perceived trap. Josh, what do you think? Yeah, no, I, I think it's uh, overall kind of a easy schedule, so I think that's actually going to hurt them in the long run because the only way they're going to realistically make the playoffs is if they – go undefeated and not only do they go undefeated they got to win by a lot like it's got to be convincing um that's the only way they're gonna make the playoffs but realistically i just think like uh going into notre dame that's that's a lot to expect maybe if it was at home they might have an edge uh but it's going to be a wake-up call so i i i do think it's going to be a one loss season and they probably get some type of significant bowl game but um for them to make the playoffs like that not only do they have to go undefeated but they have to win by a lot so it's like um, I mean, with that schedule, I mean, I mean, <laughs> that schedule looks easy to me, and I don't even watch that much college football. So, like, um, that would just be my initial thought. But I, I think Notre Dame will tell us everything, though. I mean, if they can at least make it look good, then, you know, anything can happen. But I just I don't see them. They're going to be prepared for it. Like, they're going to come in, and it's going to feel like they're ready, like every Cincinnati game. And then by halftime, it's just going to, you know, fall apart. But But we'll see. You never know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can only play the teams in your own conference. You know, with the teams on the schedule is all you can play. Uh, so they just have to take care of business. Uh, I think they're. I think this by the end of the year, this their resume will be as good as most teams. Let's put it that way. Uh, I don't like them playing Murray State. You know, I, that's that's the type of team you do not need to play if you want to build a better resume. But, you know, perhaps um, UCF and uh, the Bearcats can work a deal to get in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Uh, (laughs) They have interest. There's interest from the ACC on that. Oh, there Um, is? I hope hope upon hope that Cincinnati does not join the Big 12. Yeah, uh, me too. I mean, I think, it's... I think that's a fool's errand, and I don't think. I mean, it, the league. Everybody has already shown that they are. They don't really. The Big Twelve right now, minus Oklahoma and Texas, is no better than Cincinnati and the AAC. So, um, hopefully, if the AAC cannot work a better television contract and maybe attract some other teams to it, that maybe UC can try to get it work a deal to get into the Atlantic coast conference. That would, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, I mean, we looked at the numbers. I mean, currently the big 12 with Indiana and, and Oklahoma, you know, make about 20 million a year. And Texas then and Oklahoma. The, yeah. Uh, Texas and Oklahoma. Plus, you know, they're going to get that windfall of money from those two teams leaving. And they divide that amongst the eight teams. Yeah, so but... short term, it's a big bump, but long term, uh, I don't, I don't know that those TV rights are going to be worth that much. Whereas the ACC, um, you know, that that's twenty million, twenty something million a year that that gets I'm, you into the big time. I mean, even uh, the teams that are left in the Big Twelve, uh, they are such a small market that uh, no, you know, no television or contract is going to be that that good in the future yeah uh, i, I think know, texas have a lubbock texas off. you know uh waco texas um where's oklahoma state uh forgot stillwater whatever it is yeah still anyway you know those are not big markets uh they are not that attractive for future oh, revenue man. streams as, as that matt damon movie comes out uh, stillwater's <laughs> gonna have a population boom all right. Well, so I guess we've run out of steam on this topic. Uh, thanks to everybody for checking us out. Uh, please like, subscribe, right? We're trying to get more subscribers so Josh can get some checks coming his way. 
I think he wants to put a hot tub in the Breaker Bros South studio. Um, and, yeah, I think we know, only need a thousand subs, so I mean, I'll put it right yeah, behind us. There you go. The, the hot tub's coming. Um, and uh, until next time, hope you guys catch us later. Bye.